Hi there, I'm Kelly Fitzpatrick with Redmonk. Welcome to The Docs Are In. Today we'll be talking about documentation, technical writing, and jigsaw puzzles. Joining me to talk a bit about how all of these pieces fit together is Ember Stevens, who is a technical writer at Launch Darkly. Ember, could you please tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, why you care about documentation? Yeah, hi, thanks Kelly. Um, yeah, like you said, uh, my name is Ember, um, and I currently work for Launch Darkly, which is a business-to-business -business feature management software company. Um, so I spend my days writing technical documentation, uh, mostly about how our UI works, but also SDKs and our API and just sort of other things that come along as needed. Um, my background is actually in higher education. So um, I worked for a state university for several years. Um, and I eventually made my way to um, the admissions office for the graduate school there and um, was managing their admissions software. And then I uh, transitioned to working for that vendor. Um, and while I was working for that vendor, I found out about tech writing and um, I was doing a lot of tech writing myself um, in my role and, you know, helping train folks on on our software there. And then once I found out I could do it full time, I said, oh, hey, this, this sounds really cool. Um, so I was really fortunate to be able to get into a tech writing position there. Um, and uh, that's kind of how I got my start. So not necessarily a traditional tech background, um, but the higher ed background has, I think, been really helpful for me in a lot of ways. Yeah, that's, I think that's a great how I became a tech writer story. And if it, um, if it helps, I, I also come from the kind of like public research university background. So I've, I've worked at the State University of New York at Albany and also Georgia Tech and then ended up into, into the tech industry. So I feel like a lot of people in the tech industry have what they would consider a not traditional tech, brown, tech background in that, um, and yet end up here anyway. So yeah, it's very cool. Um, so so getting back to the kind of uh, like tech writing work you do, and you, you've spoken a little bit about the type of technical documentation that you work on at Launch Darkly. Can you talk a little bit about the workflows that go into producing that documentation? Yeah, so um, I'd like to think that we have a pretty polished workflow. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, it's different depending on what sort of documentation we're writing. Um, in general, if we're documenting a brand new feature, so, you know, something that's new um, and something that customers haven't used at all yet, we'll actually work with our engineering teams and ask them to write first draft documentation. And um, we don't expect anything polished or fancy at all. We just want um, the engineering teams to sort of get down um, you know, how they use the feature, how they expect customers to use it, what it can do, um, and just so that we have a, a baseline to work from. Um, and then from there, um, we manage all of our workflow in uh, GitHub. Um, so it'll usually actually start with a, with a ticket um, in a piece of software called Shortcut. And um, so we'll start with our ticket and then either the engineering team um, or someone else will write a first track draft documentation and PR it into GitHub. And then typically um, our tech writing team takes over from there. Um, if it's not a new piece of functionality, so maybe there's just changes to something that's existing or um, maybe you know, visual changes to the UI, a lot of smaller type stuff. Um, we don't expect engineers or other folks to do that. That's really in our realm. So um, you know, we'll work with whatever engineering team um, is making the changes, um, talk with them, Sometimes, um, you know, we'll go to their meetings or we'll schedule something in particular, like a, a individual meeting with them to find out more about the changes. Um, and then we'll make those changes ourselves. Um, again, working off of a shortcut ticket, PRing into GitHub. And, and then we add reviewers sort of just depending on if it's a real technical ch change, maybe we'll have um, an SDK expert come in and look at it. Um, if it's something that we feel like we have a handle on, then we'll just ask another writer to review it from the team. And um, then I'll publish from there. And I, um, I, I always love when documentation processes are kind of like, and we're just going to start with GitHub, um, especially when you're bringing developers in, because it's kind of like, all right, we're we're working with tools that are at least familiar to developers, um, you know, at some point. Um, what role does say like docs as code or docs like code kind of play into your kind of current processes? Um. Yeah, I, I think it serves a couple of different roles. Um, I think, like you said, it does make it a little bit easier for some of the engineers and the developers um, to work with our processes because it is tools that they're familiar with. 
Um, we also, you know, we host our own docs um, uh, on our own website. So, um, you know, we really, we have everything uh, uh, that's controlled through GitHub. So any, any sort of changes we're making, even on the back end, um, all of those go through um, the normal process in GitHub. And so, I don't know, I think it's a good way to um, keep things um, sort of controlled and uh, make sure the right uh, reviewers are looking at the right changes and that sort of thing. Um, I have worked um, in roles that didn't sort of follow the DOCSIS code um, framework. And, you know, it has advantages and disadvantages. Um, although I like it, I think that there can be a bit of a learning curve. So if you're like myself and you're coming from somewhere that um, didn't use that whole tooling process, um, you have to not only learn uh, all about you know the product that you're now writing about, but you also have to learn how to use the internal tools. And um, there can be a little bit of a ramp up there. Yeah, I feel like that could be intimidating for some people, but also I feel like once you've put in the effort to learn like those tools, I feel like they could transfer to other things very, very nicely. So it could be like an investment in, in what you um, might want to know just in the industry in general. Yeah, yeah. I'm really glad that um, I, I had to learn for the role I'm in now, um, because I also think it makes it a little bit easier to um, talk with folks and other teams that are using those same tools every day, because we kind of have, you know, the same sort of background language terminology. And, and so I think it makes a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my understanding is that you have at some point been the kind of only tech writer uh, we're, we're in your organization, um, and now you're working with, with the team and uh, you know a whole a bunch of other teams in terms of dealing with subject matter experts from, like, from time to time. What are some of the differences from being that kind of sole tech writer to that kind of you know, working with the team? You know, when I was a sole tech writer, um, there's uh, advantages and disadvantages, but I, I definitely think I prefer the team. Um, when I was working alone, you know, I had full control over, um, you know, the information architecture, you know, I decided what went in, what comes out, when it gets published. Um, and in some ways that was, um, you know, it was satisfying to get things set up in a way that I felt, you know, was logical and made sense. And, um, you know, I was doing a lot of organization and sort of, you know, cleanup from uh, previous sort of folks that had contributed here and there to um, that, that knowledge base. Um, but it was also it was a little bit lonely um, and it was, you know, sort of difficult when you don't have someone else to bounce ideas off of and go to and say, should I say it this way or this way? Do you think this are, you know, should this be organized like this or like that? Um, and it also sometimes felt like, um, you know, uh, people valued the work that I did, but there wasn't anybody else there that really understood what I was doing. And so, you know, it was sort of like, well, just give it to the tech writer and they'll figure it out. And I don't, I don't know, you know, um, they'll, they'll do some wordsmithing and it'll be magical. <laughs> and then we'll have, we'll have some documentation. Yeah. And there wasn't a real, um, necessarily it was a real clear sort of um, editing process or understanding of who had the authority to edit this because, because it was just me. So um sort of handling, well, somebody over here says, I think we need to make this change. And somebody over there says, I think we need to make that change. And reconciling those could be challenging sometimes. Um, so transitioning to working on a team, and it's a small team, there's three of us, but even that it makes, for me, a really big difference to be able to have um, just a couple of other folks who we can talk about issues. And you know, we meet every week to kind of go over what we've been working on and plan out the next week. And, and I really enjoy that. Yeah, it definitely makes collaboration different when you're collaborating with folks who are, who are doing something very like similar to what you're doing, even if you're not all doing like the exact same thing at, at any given moment. Yeah. 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 So I want to make sure that we get to the, the jigsaw puzzle kind of part of our conversation. And uh, so I met you at uh, CDCon a couple months ago, and you gave this amazing lightning talk. And I'm going I'm to make sure I read the title so I don't mix it up. Technical documentation is like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, and first of all, lightning talks are in and of themselves amazing because saying something in five minutes is so much harder than I think anyone understands that, that it is. But the talk itself I thought was great. And in it, um, you talk about well, you know, putting together jigsaw puzzles, which you have much more experience in than, than I do. Um, but also kind of how that translates to 
somebody who is perhaps trying to figure out how to begin doing technical writing, even if they're not necessarily a technical a technical writer, can you just speak a little bit about that? And we'll put a link to that talk there for folks who want to go and catch it. But like, you know, some of the highlights of that, um, especially in terms of, you know, anyone out there who's watching who's like, where, where do I go? What do I do if I want to get started with tech writing? Yeah, um, you know, I've always, uh, I've always really enjoyed jigsaw puzzles. It's sort of an activity that my family always did, and we get family reunions and get out the puzzle and everybody work on it together. And um, so I started thinking about it in terms of te technical documentation and the way that we kind of sort and organize data, whether it's you know puzzle pieces or whether we're writing about something. Um, and um, you know, I noticed that there's some people that really dislike jigsaw puzzles because it's so overwhelming. Like they open up the box and they're like, oh, forget it. Like <laughs> just like 3,000 yeah. pieces like this. Ah. Yeah. Like where do you even begin? You know? So, um, and I think that a lot of people understandably feel the same way about technical documentation. So, you know, maybe they're an engineer or developer or in some other role and, uh, you know, even a project manager, and they know that they're supposed to be writing about how something works, but uh, it's just a lot of information to distill down into, um, uh, you know, a short piece that's supposed to be clear and concise. So, um, so I started uh, so sort of seeing correlations um, in the way that, you know, you kind of take things step by step. Um, you want to know what goal you're working toward and um, uh, having sort of a steps that you can follow to help you sort and organize your thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that's that's kind of where the similarities started. Um, so some of the things that I talked about um, was, you know, you sorting your pieces. So instead of being overwhelmed by the huge pile, you can start thinking about, okay, the red piece is over here, the blue piece is over here, this has a weird texture on it, that's going to go up there. And, um, and you can think about technical documentation in the same way when you're thinking about like, what, what, are, what are my end goals? What are some, some common themes here? And um, what am I going to actually end up uh, communicating to the reader. Um, and then, you know, working through building an outline. So just like you pull out your edge pieces with a puzzle and put them together, um, creating an outline for yourself uh, can just sort of help guide you and make you not feel necessarily so overwhelmed by the blank page. Um, and then I also talk about getting an editor. Um, and uh, that doesn't necessarily have to be another writer or, a, you know, a capital E editor. That really can be um, anyone that has, you know, some familiarity with the, what you're doing. So maybe it's somebody from the engineering team or maybe it's somebody from marketing or um, just in a way that like getting help with puzzle pieces, sometimes you're looking, you're looking and you just can't see the relationship and someone else can come along and say, oh no, that goes right there. Um, get, get some fresh eyes on this problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's just, uh, I feel like that's so valuable when you're writing. Um, even when you're a good experienced writer, there's always going to be something that someone else is going to catch that you don't. And um, so you're going to end up with a better end product. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, for me, I think the visual that I take away from, from that is uh, the idea of the outline as putting the, the kind of edges of the puzzle together. Like I had never thought about it that way before. And that was just like, and I love outlining. I'm like, I think outlines are great. I'm like, mm -hmm. Oh man, this is... This is like a really good both visualization and explanation for for kind of why this why would you make this part of your your process like at all? Yeah, you know it's funny. Um, I I always when I'm putting together a puzzle, I always uh, put together the the edge pieces first. And uh, I you know I'm really I'm into competitive jigsaw puzzling, and I you know read about it. And so I saw somebody talking about how real experts, people who puzzle competitively, they get to the point where they actually don't put together the edge first. Like that's a that's a pretty standard technique, but eventually you can get so good that you actually can start working on on pieces. So that that's really impressive. I'm not there yet, um, but uh, but yeah, generally I always go for the outline. Excellent. Well, this has been a great chat. Thank you so much for taking the time for to speaking with us today. Yeah, thank you. I enjoyed being here. Excellent. Um, and with that, the docs are out. <laughs>